Hi, this is Mark from eReplacementParts.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to clean a carburetor off of a Ryobi string trimmer. Ryobi manufactures quite a few of their carburetors in their, chi in their Chinese facility, and unfortunately, they don't offer rebuild kits for most of them, so cleaning them could be a little tricky, and we'll show you how to do that right now. Traditionally, to rebuild a carburetor or clean a carburetor, we would start with a rebuild kit which would consist of new gaskets and o-rings and all the parts that basically wear out. Like I said before, Ryobi doesn't offer those kits so we have to very carefully clean this carburetor. I'm going to start by removing the bottom plate on the carb. There's just two screws that hold it in place. Some of their carburetors use four screws in this location. When rebuilding or cleaning any carburetor, it's a good idea to carefully lay out your parts as you disassemble it. Lay them out in the same order that you removed them and in the same orientation so that when you go to reassemble it, it'll be, you'll know exactly where everything goes. So here's that lower cover plate. I'm separating it from the diaphragm gasket, just like that. I'll set it aside. Here I've actually got the diaphragm stuck to this gasket. And this is one of those spots I have to be very, very careful to separate it because without a rebuild kit available if I ruin one of these parts it's game over for the carburetor I, I'll just flat out have to replace it so there we go just tighten that underneath those pieces we find here I've got the needle and the little mechanism that pulls the needle back there's a little spring under that to remove this piece I just remove this little Phillips head screw. And you want to keep a hold on that little spring mechanism as you remove the screw. If you don't, that'll fly across your shop. And there you can see it all kind of pops out with the spring. There's the spring, there's the needle. And I'm just going to set all this aside on my towel. Now I'll flip it over and we'll start disassembly on the primer bulb side. Again, two Phillips head screws hold this together. I'm going to lay these parts out in a second row on my towel to keep them separated from the first series of parts. I pulled the primer bulb off. I can actually push the bulb out of that piece and we'll clean those separately. Now remove this plate. This little thin piece contains valves and openings that the fuel flows through. These little pieces here are actually little reed valves and I need to be very careful not to damage this piece. And then there's a gasket on this headpiece. If the gasket will come off easily, I'll remove it. If it seems to be stuck like this one is, I'll just leave it on. There's more chance of me doing damage to it than leaving it in its place when I clean it. So with everything removed, now we're ready to do some cleaning. I'm going to start by cleaning the carburetor body. And I'm just using a can of carburetor cleaner. And I'll spray this off. I'm pretty liberal with the uh, cleaner. I want to get everything clean both inside and out. The reason I want to clean the outside of the carburetor just as carefully as the inside is if I leave little pieces of grass or dirt on the outside as I work with this I'll end up transferring them to the inside of the carburetor and we'll just clog it again. Many of the little holes or openings I can actually stick the, the tube on my carburetor cleaner in there and when I spray you can see it comes out that orifice on the carburetor and that's a good way to clean those out. You just want to make sure that uh, the part you're cleaning isn't pointed at you or you'll get a very unpleasant surprise. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. One last little piece we'll look at and again here you have to kind of use a judgment call whether you're going to do more damage trying to clean it or just leaving it as it is. And that's right here. At the base of that large hole you probably can't see it on the video there's a very very fine mesh screen it's a little filter inside the carburetor typically I found you do more damage to those trying to remove them trying to remove them to just leaving them in place so I'm just gonna leave that alone with the body of the carburetor clean I'm gonna use some compressed air now to blow and off the excess carburetor cleaner and to dry it out I'll do that now Okay, and that's all we need to do with the body of the carburetor for now. I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And we're going to spend a little bit of time cleaning some of these other parts. 
mainly this primer base. Um, again, there is a fuel line that passes through here, so we want to make sure we clean that all out very well. And just basically the same process again, just using the carburetor cleaner. Clean all sides, all areas of it. Just any little opening you see, run a little bit of fluid through it. And again, with the compressed air, just blow that off. The last piece I'm going to worry about is that little reed uh, valve, that little thin mylar piece. Here you want to be very careful. Too much carburetor cleaner can damage this piece. So I use as little as I can. And when I'm done, I quickly dry it off with a clean rag. Okay, here, there we've got everything pretty clean. Uh, the one piece I avoided cleaning is the diaphragm. This is a thin piece of rubber, and again, I found a lot of times cleaning this, you can do more damage than just leaving it alone. If you do see a lot of varnish or gel from old fuel on there, then you'll have no choice but to clean it. In this case, it looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now we can start reassembly. Now we'll go ahead and reassemble our carburetor. Basically, we're just going to do the same steps in reverse order. I'm going to start on the side of the carburetor with the needle valve. First, I'm going to take the needle and set it onto the forked portion of our little lever there, just like that. Then we have the little spring that lifts that lever. I'm going to set it into its pocket on the carburetor. Now, I'll carefully just drop the needle down into the hole where the jet is. At the same time, that lever catches the top of the spring and I just can push all this down into the carburetor into its position. There we go, just like that. Take the little Phillips screw, set it in place, and we'll tighten it down. That can be one of the trickiest parts of cleaning your carburetor, uh, just keeping that spring in place and not having it fly across the shop. Okay, with that in place, now the next thing is Our diaphragm, just lay it onto the carburetor. Then the carburetor or the diaphragm gasket. And finally, this bottom plate that holds it all together. You'll notice there's a little tab here that fits into a hole on those gaskets and the diaphragm. That kind of aligns everything to the carburetor. And then I can replace those two screws. Okay, now I'll flip the carburetor over and we can rebuild this side. Here I start with that thin little Mylar uh, reed valve. And this one you have to make sure you get it back in the proper orientation. Just like that. Now the primer base goes on. followed by the primer bulb and its retaining plate. Put those two screws back in. And with a little luck, my carburetor will work like new again, and that will save me the money of having to replace the carburetor.